Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onig Backyard. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig. Thanks for joining me for the latest edition of our astronomy blog, Skyblog 3, keeping you up to date with what's going on across the Mid-South where it comes to satellites, planets, stars, anything like that going on. We'll do our best to bring you as thorough an update as possible. Got anything you'd like to send or promote when it comes to astronomy in the Mid-South? meetings or events or viewing sessions, please let me know. We'd be glad to add them to the social calendar on there to let people know more about what's going on in the Mid-South area. Tonight, we may luck out and get just a little bit of some clear skies available to get some, again, viewing conditions out there that are not too bad, getting a little bit of some crepuscular rays out that direction, maybe some clouds out beyond the horizon casting shadows so you see less sunlight over here and a little bit more sunlight ro rising up from from the sunset area out across the area there and just right above me up to that direction you got the planet Venus and the crescent moon will be training it will be coming around to the full quarter uh, first quarter moon coming up here a little bit later on, but unfortunately, I don't think you can see that through the trees out that direction. Hopefully, the skies stay a little bit on the clearer side tonight. We'll be able to see a couple of things coming up, but also going to be seeing a lot less over the next few days because of the fact that we've got a lot of clouds and a new storm system coming on through. For details on that and the chance of snow in the Mid-South, please check out my weather blog. That's Weather Overtime, available at WREG.com slash weather. Sky blog is where we talk a little bit more about what's going on with astronomy and as of right now we have a few things to take a look at for tonight a few couple of uh, viewing opportunities to take a look at if you'd like to go outside and see what's available to you the first one will be at about 5:20 this evening and that'll be the international space station it's going to be not entirely too bright very close to the sunset about 5:21, and very close to the northwest horizon so doubtful you're going to be able to see that if you don't have a clear enough view you might be able to see the space plane otv4 the X-37B from Boeing over orbiting the Earth about 533. That's going to be very dim and almost impossible to spot. The next thing you might see is Tiangong-1, the abandoned space station, about an hour later. That'll be viewed at about 621 tonight in almost exactly the same place, rising from the western horizon and heading around back to around the area close to Polaris, the North Star. So if you'd like to be able to take a look at that, uh, go to Heavens Above, heavens-above.com, plug in your location, and you'll be able to find out more about what's flying over, when, the magnitude or the brightness of the satellite, and a lot of other cool stuff available out there. Uh, iridium flares, not really too much to be seen, unfortunately, over the evening tonight. We've got one iridium flare possible. And then tomorrow, there's going to be a succession of about three of them, actually. Two in the morning, one in the afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, one, at, one tonight at about 522 in the northeastern skies. That'll be Iridium 11. And then over tomorrow, the course of the day from 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.03, 6.06 in the morning, and 5.16 in the evening, there'll be a three Iridium flares possible. Uh, not unfortunately going to be able to see all those thanks to the fact that the weather out there uh, is going to be a little bit not cooperative because we've got a new storm system coming on through. So that could be just a bit of a problem for viewing opportunities. Looks like it's going to be a lot of indoor astronomy over the course of the next few days. Earthsky.org, great article on the earlier sunsets that we've been seeing thanks to the fact that we're coming close to the solstice the sun is almost at its lowest point in the sky we're just about two and a half weeks away from the winter solstice occurring as we head out of autumn and into winter. So if you'd like to see more about that and why the latitude of the situation has a lot to do with it, check out earthsky.org. Astronomy picture of the day, a very nice view, looking down at the lower portion of Jupiter in a different magnitude or wavelengths uh, being seen there. If you'd like to see more of just absolutely astonishing pictures taken from around our solar system or from the universe or from here on our own planet, all you have to do is search APOD, Astronomer, Astronomy Picture of the Day, from NASA, and you'll be able to get this. Thousands and thousands of great pictures available through here and some great links explaining what you're looking at and why they're taking pictures of it. Now, coming up this next year on August 21st, there's going to be a solar eclipse coming our way. 
going right across the continental United States. And this one, if the weather holds, should be very, just absolutely uh, incredible. It'll be starting to cross the country, uh, heading on through the area by about early to mid-afternoon on the 21st. And the path of totality is going to go right through just north of the Mid-South area. Matter of fact, it should be just going right around St. Louis to Kansas City, down to Nashville, Chattanooga, north of Atlanta, and across the Carolinas. And for us, it's going to be about 1.30 in the afternoon when it's almost total. But here's the really cool news from Space.com. In order to promote this, uh, the American Astronomy Association has promoted the possibility of getting some mini grants out there to promote astronomy. If you've got an educational uh, system, a school, anything like that that will be want to be holding uh, outdoor viewing opportunities, and again, hopefully the weather's going to be good for that, the Julina Steinheider Duncombe Mini Grants Program will be funding educational activities and engaging the public in and about the eclipse. It's named in honor of astronomer Steinheider Duncombe, who passed away in 2003 and who published eclipse eclipse predictions for the United States Naval Observatory and the American Ast uh, Astronomical Society Solar Eclipse Task Force developed both initiatives on this, including the website you can get the information, which is eclipse.aas.org for more information about how to view the eclipse, viewing events, and more detailed solar eclipse websites. And again, that's eclipse.aas.org. More about weather, including our approaching storm system. You can download our current weather app, it's available at your particular app store, whether it's Apple, Android, or whatever you've got. Go to your app store and search WREG, dot, search WREG weather, or you can get weather by pointing your browser at WREG.com slash weather. And keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll have more coming up on astronomy on Skyblog 3. And be sure to check out all my social media websites down below, and we'll keep you updated on what's going on when it comes to astronomy in the Mid-South. And once again, imploring everybody, if there's anything going on out there that you would like everybody to know about viewing opportunities science opportunities stuff for kids stuff for adults whatever it is if it has anything to do with astronomy and especially science about astronomy i'd be glad to put it on here and let people know a little bit more about that way too much great stuff up there for people to be missing in everyday life so a good opportunity to promote the idea of science and just how cool all this stuff is please let me know it's austin.onic at wreg.com we'd be glad to let you know more about what's going on in the skies above the mid-south over the course of the next several weeks months and however long we can keep this going as long as people are interested in it so again please let me know more about that i'll have more about what's going on with indoor astronomy as that next storm system gets a little bit closer to us so stay tuned for more on that and we'll have more details on the forecast coming up tonight on news channel 3 and also coming up at wreg.com slash weather i'm meteorologist austin onick from the news channel 3 home office backyard stay tuned for more with news channel 3 on air and online and please remember whenever it comes to anything involving science or astronomy to keep looking up